I was going to look at um, Christ uh, tonight as the Redeemer, but as I began to pray and begin to study, my heart was just directed in a different way, and I wanted to look at Christ the Refiner. Christ the Refiner. Uh, just, you know, events of life. We all, we all have those things in our life where we wonder, God, why am I going through this? Or, you know, why is the hand of God allowed this to happen? Sometimes things happen because of our choices. It's not God's fault. But when we're surrendered to God and things happen and you know, we wonder, God, what, what what is this all about? And so I want to I want to look at this, and I think life is about this. It's about God refining us and making us who that we should and can be. In the book of Malachi, Malachi tonight, Malachi. Chapter number three. Some of this is prophetic as, as we're looking here um, of, of, of Christ's first and second advent. When we're looking at verse 1 and 2, but I want to go particularly down to verse number 3. Um, and focus, but I'm going to read 1 and 2. Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom, whom you seek shall come, suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he, he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that he may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. And he sits as a refiner and pure, uh, purifier of silver, that he may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. And so when we look at and we consider the collection and the uh, consideration of the refiner, Jesus Christ, what's He doing as He's refining us and uh, uh, as He collects us? First, let me say this. I'm sorry, I have a little piece of gum about my eyes. I'm going to have to spit it out. As He collects us, he sees us as being valuable. Uh, he, 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 he considers us valuable. He looks at us and he sees that we are, we are, or, or uh, as, as, as he collects us, I'll say more about that in just a few moments. He sees that we're that solid piece of material um, that when it is collected, it can have extracted from it something that is very valuable. When God looks at humanity, He sees us as a value. He looks at us, and you may you may question what your worth is sometimes, and you may be hard on yourself, and you may not understand why you're here, or what your purpose is, or what your value is, but God looks at you, and He says, I want to collect you. You are or to me. You are something that has great value, and so I want to refine you. I, 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 I want to, uh, uh, as, as He breaks that big piece into smaller pieces, uh, Brother Craig, he sees us individually and personally, not just as humanity, but he sees us as individuals and he collects us seeing that there's a process by which he can refine us and bring out some good things just for that. He sees us as being valuable. And so when we look at that, we consider our value. If you ever get down and hard on yourself and wonder, why am I created? Why am I existing? God, I don't know what my purpose is. I, I, I'm upset with, with 
life itself upset with why you're here. Remember this, that Jesus Christ, amen, died upon the cross of Calvary. God sent forth His only begotten Son because He loves you. He loves you. And He chose you when no one else is thinking about you and when no one else cares for you, when you struggle to think about yourself and care for yourself, know that God cares and thinks and loves you. Amen. Amen. If there's any thought should, that should overwhelm us, it should be the thought that God loves us that much, that he, that, that he died for us, that He cares about us. And so the Lord tonight, listen, if you don't hear anything else tonight, the Lord considers you very important. He does. He considers you very important. And so, even though at times in our life we're going to pass through the refining process, and we can question that process, and we don't like that process, and it's a difficult process, and it's a hot process, but God is putting us through the process because He's working to bring up the best of us. So when we have pounding problems and troubles and trials, and it feels like our heart is under fire, know that God's working to humble to do something as a refiner in our life to bring forth the very best. God loves. God collects. God considers. And then God is not only considering that, but He's cognizant of the refining process. That's something I'm not so much familiar with. But we've got only by reading and studying do I know a little bit about it. But he knows how to work with what is given to him. And so those that have ever worked with metal, you know about the extrusion process. And uh, you're a little bit knowledgeable about uh, what is needed to purify the metal. But do you know that all metals have to be heated at a different temperature to be able to refine them to the best process? In fact, when you think about silver, and that's what I'll be looking at most tonight because the Word of God is dealing with the silver, and He talked about that, 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 that He sits as a refiner and the purifier of silver. Do you know silver has to be heated to exactly 1,760 degrees Fahrenheit? That's hard for our mind to imagine. We hate a hot day of 120 uh, degrees with humidity. Uh, think about being in that refining process of 1,760 degrees. That's a hot process. But it has to be in that process. Anything less than that will not refine. And anything more than that will not do the job either. It doesn't allow the metal to be the best that it can be. And so knowing that, that, that it melts at that, that uh, the refiner has to know how to generate that heat in the furnace, and uh, uh, he has to know a lot, not, not only about different metals and their temperature, but he has to know about the fuel that is used to heat the temperature to that specific degree so that it is refined in the proper process. And so, uh, think about this, that he uses something uh, called uh, cruci uh, crucibles, that these crucibles are actually containers by which the metal is put into, and it's put into the refiner's fire, but he has to know what type of crucibles to use that will allow the metal to be heated properly to bring the refining to it. So he knows about the temperatures, he knows about the different metals, he knows about the heat, and he knows about the crucibles, the right that the holder to put that in that it refines the, the metal to bring forth the very pure. I mean, he knows everything about that. So that it, it, it brings forth the best. So the crucibles or the couple, uh, oftentimes for silver, is made out of bone ash. I don't know all of this stuff. I do a little research. Google's an amazing thing. Utilize it and it'll give you some of the same answers that it gave me. But, but as it's used to, to uh, its pores, it, it allows the metal to heat at the right temperature and the refining process, and it, re, uh, it, it actually leaves the genuine silver, silver in, in the couple that, that, that is used. And so knowing the chemicals of the metal and all the stuff together to bring about the best impurities, I need to say this, God knows the right things. 
to bring out the dross in our life. So it's the temperature, it's the type of metal, it's the type of fuel to be used. Uh, it is the right container that will bring forth the pure. Spirit. All those, all those uh, elements together to bring forth the best. We wonder in our lives why we sometimes have the struggles and the problems. But it's because God is using the best to refine us. I don't like this God. We don't have to like it. But God knows what's best to bring out the very best in value in us. Wow. 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 He knows all of the elements to be able to heat us at the right temperatures, the right situations to place us in, to bring out the most valuable in us. And so, uh, 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 I'm not going to read scriptures tonight, so I'm going to look up for the sake of time. But I like what 1 John 3 20 says, For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and know all things. Sometimes when we're in the situation, we wonder and we question and we don't understand. But the great news is this, is Jesus Christ knows all and He's working all for our good and for His glory. He said, I'm the great shepherd and I know my sheep and, 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 and I am known of mine. He knows us. He knows what's best for us. He knows what refining process to put us through that we come out and, 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 and the best of us is given. He is the controller of the heat and the furnace. Do you realize that He controls all the circumstances and all the trials of our life? That's like putting your hand on the knob of the fuel gauge and being able to control that temperature knowing that you're able to bring forth the best product. Now, Brother Craig, you know, did God want that theft? But maybe He allowed it to happen to you because He knew it could bring out in you something greater. And your life would be, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, your life would be a true testimony of the refiner's fire, how it is to work. And sister, so maybe the sickness got allowed because there was something there that God knew that He was going to refine you and you were going to be a product of the temperature that He put you into. The great news is this, 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted, tempted above that which ye are able, but also with the temptation of a made a way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. God knows what we can bear tonight. Sometimes we feel like we're at the breaking point. Some folks say, well, God promised me that He'll never not give me more than what I'm able to bear. Amen. That is true. He'll always give you what you are able to bear. You may not like it, but He'll make a way of escape with it. Isaiah 48.10 says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the fire of affliction. Sometimes it's the things in our life that we don't like, but He chose the fire of affliction that He can best refine us and make us into what He wants us to be. So He's a collector of, the, uh, 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 of, of all the, the ore and, 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 and that brokenness. Do you know that when you find silver in my research, uh, uh, what are they called? Cubelets, I believe it's called. Couplets, cubelets. When they're broken, they, they look like chunks of stone almost. But when they're broken, you'll look at that and where the silver is, you'll actually see white there. Because you know why? Because in there, there is some purity of silver. And it's not seen, but just a little bit of the brokenness. But God knows how to break us and refine us to bring out the best in us. He knows the fire of our affliction. What to do to bring out the very best in us to be glory to His name. And I don't want to get to hell to hell myself. But that's what He'll use to shine the light of who He is and reflect Himself through us. And so, uh, he, he is the controller of the situation. And then He is the, 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 the care or the presence of the refiner. You see, the, the silver, while it is being refined, it, there's special attention that has to be given to the metal. 
Do you realize that when God puts people through the fire, that He is there with them? He is the caretaker? Do you remember that Old Testament story where we know about, ever since we were little children, we read about three men who were thrown into the fire. But Brother Eli, when they looked in, they saw four. Brother Justin, the fourth looked like the Son of Man. Because Jesus showed up in the middle of the fire. Amen. Jesus will always show up in the middle of the fire because He is the refiner. Amen. Beloved, we are never alone, but we're always at the hands of the refiner. His hand is up upon the container, amen, that's in the fire that is purified. Amen. We are always in the hand of the refiner. How awesome tonight. Amen. Isaiah said, and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away thy sin. Amen. His hands upon us. He's purifying us. When we're going through the things that we don't like, when we're going through the difficulties, the trials of life, amen, know this, that the, God, He is purging us and His hand is upon us. That's a promise from His Word. Amen. Psalms 31, 15, My times are in Thy hand. Amen. Everything about the times of our life, the seasons, the good, the bad, the difficult, the refining, they're in God's hands. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Peter said, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Know and trust that He is working in your life in those refining moments. His hand's upon you. Jeremiah said, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hands, so are you in my hands. O house of Israel, we're in God's hands. Praise God for that. We're never alone because His eyes are constantly upon us. Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all the earth to show Himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward Him. God's eyes is upon you. His hands are upon you. Even in the difficult times, He's refining you. The great news in this that there is changing power and cleansing power in the potter's hands. How many of us really want to be where we are? All of us want to be different. Do you know the difficult times when we surrender them to God? That the potter, that the refiner has changing power? See, the refiner will take that silver that's in that solid state and he knows what to do to change it from that uh, solid state into a liquid state. What happens is the matrix or the molecular um, structure of the silver breaks down. And so it goes from being that solid into a, a, a liquid state. And, and, and so then as it is in that liquid state, it is easy to be separated the dross or the impurities from that which is pure and valuable. And so God says this, that I am refining you, but I am going to show you in your life that there are things that are dross, that are not good. They're not becoming of the kingdom of God. They're not beneficial for your life. They don't allow the reflection of Jesus Christ light to shine through you. So I'm going to change the state of who you are and I'm going to take you and I'm going to purify you. Amen. Thank God that He doesn't leave us as we are. Amen. The drug addict is no longer a drug addict. The alcoholic is set free from the alcohol that, that bounds, that binds them. Those that are addicted to grace great things. Amen. Find that, that God puts them through the fire because He removes those things that, 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 that are contaminating their life, keeping them from being who He wants them to be. Right. Amen. You may say, well, Brother Seville, I'm not the addict. But there are still things in each of our lives, amen, that God does, 
desires to change the state of who we are. And sometimes He has to put us through a refining process that it changes who we are so that He can refine us. Amen. He wants the very best of us. And so He takes the best of the silver. Amen. And He, he separates it from the worst. Amen. And He does the same thing in our lives so that we become more pure and more valuable. As long as, as the dross clings to the silver, it's not valuable. Amen. And as long as God allows our self, our flesh, our sinful nature, things of our life to cling to us, we are not as valuable for the kingdom of God as what we should and can be. And so He puts us through that process. We don't like when we have financial difficulties. We don't like when we have health crisis. We don't like when situations of our life are helter-skelter. We don't like it. But God allows it to be a process by which He refines us because He wants to bring out the very best in us. So I feel like tonight that there are folks in here that you understand that process and you're there and you're going through it. But He's changing. He's quickening us so that we're not hampered by the drugs. But we're set free so we can survive. The Lord Jesus, He quickens us just as the refiner quickens that soul from a solid state into a liquid state. And the great news is in John chapter number 5, verse number 21, the Bible says, for as the Father raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom He will. Do you want God to refine and bring to life the most valuable parts of you? It's to the Father. It's to the Father. Sometimes the greater the affliction, the more powerful the anointing afterwards. The greater the testimony. Because God's refining and working in you. Ephesians 2, and I won't read all of it, but you can read verse number 1 through 5. He says, And you have the quickened who are dead in your sins and trespasses. Do you know what he did? One day he said, I'm going to take you through the refiner's fire. I'm going to take you through a breaking down process where we're broken and we're at the mercies of God. God, save us. Bring us to, 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 to life spiritually. Amen. And as he breaks us down, he brings us to life. He said, where in times past you walked according to trespasses and sins. Where in times past uh, uh, you, worked, you, you walked according to the curse of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in, uh, in the children of disobedience. He said, but God who is rich in mercy uh, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even so when we were dead in our sins hath quickened us together in Christ. Or with Christ. Amen. He saved us. Amen. God knows how to place us in the refiner's fire. Take away the chaff. Take away the dross. And bring out the pure. Proverbs 25 4 says, Take away the dross from the silver. And there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. How many of you want to be a vessel for the finer? He removes, he cleanses impurities. As he changes from the solid to the liquid, it's made more pure, so are we changed by Jesus Christ. And then the completion of the refiner. Silver, some some objects absorb light. Other objects reflect, refract it and reflect, shine the light. Silver is an amazing thing because it reflects light. It's a conductor of electricity. How many of you, how many of you today Use this little tool that probably most of us all have in our house called a mirror. Anybody use a mirror? Yeah. It's an interesting piece of equipment because it's glass. Anybody ever break a mirror before? I have. 
I don't believe in seven years of bad luck. If that were the case, I'd still be in many years of bad luck. But one thing I do know for a fact about a mirror is that glass is taken and there's a thin layer of silver that is placed beyond the glass. Then when you and I pull up that mirror, we see that handsome fellow or that beautiful lady looking at us. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> because it reflects the light. Uh -huh. Well, when we see who we are in Christ, it's not scary, right? It's beautiful. And so, we look and we see what Jude says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, he presents you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. He makes you a mirror that reflects the light of who Yes. You say, I don't like the trial. I don't like the test. I don't like the refinement. I don't like the difficulty. Guess what? None of us do. But He chooses, for a lack of better words, the fire of affliction to put us in. That will best refine us. He knows just the right temperature to turn up the heat. He knows just the right circumstances to place you in so that He pulls off the dross. And we're all aware of this. He knows that, 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 that it is a pure piece of silver, Brother John, because He pulls the dross off and He looks down and He sees a reflection of Himself in the silver. And so when God has placed us through the refiner's fire and He's pulled off the dross and He's changed us. We're no longer that solid state, but we're a liquid state. It's now pliable to be whatever God wants us to be. Amen. So if there's something out of silver that's being formed or made, it's not until it's, it's heated up that it becomes pliable. God knows that on our own we are rigid and stubborn. So He puts on the fire of adversity. Amen. He puts us through the test so that He can make us pliable and He can look and see that we are changed and no longer is it dirty, but His reflection is seen in us. Amen. God put us to the fire of affliction. Amen. That we may show who He is. Zechariah says, and I will bring thee, uh, and, and I will bring the third part through the fire, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Amen. After we go through the fire, after we rely upon Him, after He gets rid of self and sin and all the dross, Amen. And we are refle He is reflected in us. We have a testimony that says, He's my God. He saw me through. He's made me a better person out of this. Amen. We don't like it, but He refines us for a reason. He purifies us. See, anyone ever hear of Mark Twain? That guy Huck Fence wrote about Mark Twain. Mark Twain really had some folks that displayed Jesus Christ very poorly to him. They were hypocrites. Yes. And the church can be filled with hypocrites. Some on purpose, some not on purpose. But those who allow God to take them through the refiner's fire is the one to reflect Jesus Christ. And it was Mark Twain who said of his mother and his wife, they showed him who Jesus was. The refiner's fire will show who Jesus is. I gotta close quickly. But I can't help but think about someone who showed me who Jesus is through the refiner's fire. His name was Joe. And we know that this man was godly, but God allowed him to go th through the fire. Satan appeared. We know that I don't want to go through all the details. I don't have time, and you're probably familiar because I've, I've, I've talked about him before many times. God puts Satan on a leash. He can only go this far, but he puts Job through the refiner's fire. 
And as he's going through the fire, Job has a recognition and an understanding of the, of, of the control of the refiner because he said, but the Lord knoweth the way that I take. Listen, when we are going through the fire of adversity, we've got to have the knowledge that even though we can't feel God or we can't see God, we have to have the knowledge that God knows the way that we take. Are you with me tonight? Amen. He knew you crashed your van, brother. Amen. He knew the, 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 the struggle it was going to be for you and your wife to get another van. It's been a long journey. But we have to know that God knows the way that we take it. Obviously, we're seeing the hand of God in it. Amen. We, we have to know that God knows the way that we take. There's a lot of things about life I don't like. And there's some challenges and there's some struggles. I don't like them. They're unique to me. And they're fires that God has placed me in. And Brother Greg, he's, at, he's not put you there. And I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I'm in this fire by myself. It's mine. It's my story. I don't have to like it. But I have to know, Brother Justin, that God chose this way. And He knows where I'm at. And He knows where I'm taking. And Job said, you know, I know the way. He knows the way that I take. God gave Satan permission. Job says, but when He has tried me. But when He has tried me. Know that God is allowing these things. God may not have been behind some of these things. It could be the enemy. But God allows it. Because God knows that in the end He's going to find us. It may even be our own crazy choices. And God said, okay, I gave you the power of choice. With every choice, there's consequences but I'm with you in your choices. How many ever made a bad choice? You don't raise your hand. Made a bad choice. But God said, oh, wow. I'm going to go with you. It was your choice. And we found out this choice ain't the wisest choice. But God's with us. And when He's trying, I will come forth as people. Sometimes there's choices that we didn't make. God says, you know, I'm going to show you that I'm God. I'm going to show everybody else. But before the mirror can ever be, I've got to refine the soul. The soul can refine the light. Like that. So we go through these situations. And the Bible says in Job 42, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all of his brothers, all of his sisters, and all that had been his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house. And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one of... Uh, uh, Every, every one an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job's life more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and 3,000, I'm sorry, and 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she asses. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He knows the way that I take. And when his child. I shall have a Tonight, he's the refined. Trust him with the process. I'm about to stop. Um. So, I ask you. So, one of the biggest things for me is, in my life, is I want to be the fixer. I want to be the fixer. Well, I'm not always a fixer. And I have to be okay not being a fixer. And sometimes I really want to see results right here, right now. I want to pray the fire of God down and God consume it. But uh, He doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it's a process. And you know what? 
I'm not the controller of the heat. My hand is not on the container that you're in. God's yours. And I have to allow God just to do the process. That's painful. The fixture in me wants to fix it. But in God, God says, you can't fix it. I'm refined. And only I allow my 